Hello everybody, and welcome back to The Long Dark. Um, so first of all, I want to say that up until now, I have been starting, start recording when I actually open the game. And if you remember, back in the first episode, let's check this Nobody out. Needs this anymore. Okay, we'll take that, because I think you can wear two hats, but I've only got one on. No, I've got two on. Okay, let's see if this one's better than this one. I don't think it is. Okay, so actually I think we're going to drop this one. We'll put it in the locker here. Um, but anyways... As I was saying, um, in the, back in the first episode, I talked about how I wasn't going to do any kind of intro or outro, um, and kind Stuff of will come in handy. accidentally, I didn't really like think about it until like this week, but you know, playing the game, starting recording. When I first opened the game, what the game intro was kind of an intro. So from now on, I'm just gonna jump right into the game and um, you know just play from here, play from the game. So that way it's that way it kind of gives it more of a consistent feel. Like if you're watching these on a playlist. See how good it is, or how bad it is. So it must be outer layer. Hmm. Is it an accessory? Hmm. So what? It's a a very specific outer layer. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but no, it's oh, this. What we're wearing is better. The uh, parka is better, so we're gonna leave that in there with the hat. Okay. <clears throat> so this time, we are going to be searching the dam here. This is the like. Cause I'm sure the the dam was used as a power station cup of coffee. No, we're gonna leave that there. Carter Hydro Dam. In the 1960s, a small hydroelectric dam was built on the Carter River. There you go. The project was engineered and financed by industrial magnate Richard Carter, who intended to use power from the dam to sustain a small town he planned to build for the growing workforce across his mining empire. Unfortunately, a combination of setbacks due to seismic activity, which resulted in several deaths and forced the shutdown of one of his mines, and a drop in price of coal and copper in the late 1960s, bankrupted Carter, who abandoned the nearby, the nearly completed project. In the 1980s, there were multiple attempts to modernize Car Carter Dam and bring it back online, but by then, changes to the local climate and the hydrodynamics of the Mystery Lake area, as well as external public pressure to, in support of the newly minted Mystery Lake Provincial Park, resulted in Carter Dam being shut down for good in the late 1990s. Labor disputes and early eco-activism by a small group of environmentalists, billing themselves the Forest Talkers, resulted in sudden closure of the dam, primarily for the employees' safety. The skeleton crew of maintenance workers were actually trapped in the dam for days until mediators could extract them. No violence was reported, but the event served to galvanize the forest talkers, who felt their success in keeping Carter Dam shut down validated 
validated their continued work to protect great bears' further development and exploitation. to search here. Nope, nothing. Nope. And the, uh, even with the computer with two, two screens, didn't, uh, keep anything in, in the drawer. Seems like the quakes did some damage here. Yeah. Must be what the old guy meant about unstable. Um, so we're looking for... a first aid kit. Or some sort of first aid supplies. Uh, 43%. Now we're gonna leave it. we here? Yep, definitely take that. And go ahead and alright, no, we're already fully loaded up. Good. Oh. Okay. Ooh, accelerant. I think we've got plenty of accelerant actually. We almost never use it. Broken metal light fixture. Axel to break it down. Um, so like at the workbench, which is this over here, there's, you can make stuff like this, like the snare and a lot of other stuff. But like, I haven't actually seen a forge yet and I don't know if it's in the game yet or not. There's, they have different kinds of workbench supplies, I guess. Just basically stuff you could use like scrap metal and you can make scrap metal by breaking stuff down but the problem is or not the problem i just don't think they've introduced much of the actual could end up being useful building in the game light synthetic vest used by runners allows great upper body mobility and a tiny bit of warp um i'm just gonna assume that's not very good so we're just gonna leave it No, we did not pick up the flare gun. So we'll leave that. That'll force some of these lockers open. What was that? It sounded like that was more than just the wind. It's getting very dark down here. Ooh. Ooh. It's not Astrid. That'll come in handy. All right. So it seems like they're making ammo a lot more readily available since the Redux, because in my first playthrough, I had a heck of a time <coughs> finding enough rifle cartridges to like actually be able to use it so it's it's good to see that make the uh playthrough a bit easier Keep like this thing isn't opening unless i can get the power working again mm. so that's a problem for later i have to get those radio parts all right great i'm glad he said that because i forgot about radio parts too yeah of course that's not gonna work table. So I'm assuming first aid supplies are going to be in one of these offices, right? That seems like a logical place to keep it. Yeah, these old rattly pipes. These are all nice touches. I, I love how much detail they put into this game. Hope nobody needs this anymore. They're already at 47%. So we're going to just leave those. Last thing we want when we're sick is to just get more sick from bad medication. No, we're going to leave those. 
the ones we've got are I'm pretty sure the same ones, but they're in better condition. quite sure if I should break down these boxes because I think sometimes there's stuff in them but if there's not I don't want to waste time breaking them down and really I'm, I'm pretty good on just about everything right now so I don't really need a whole lot of supplies I'd say maybe some food but thank goodness alright no, that's a good good condition we'll take that one Candy bar? Yeah, granola bar. Excellent. Oh wait, what condition was it in? Okay, I think we're good. This will come in handy. All right, simple tools. Bandage. Excellent. So I'm pretty sure tools I can actually use with the workbench to possibly build more stuff. I'm not not quite sure. Decent hoodie. I could use that. this. No, we're, we're definitely going to leave that here. Fingerless gloves are not the warmest thing. Okay, let's check out that uh, that hoodie. less rain resistant or less waterproof but it is better warmth and windproof and really you just you really just need the waterproof stuff on the outer layer like this so yeah I think we're gonna switch out this excellent I love how the little little guy changes when you put stuff on Okay. And we'll have to I'm gonna drop that shirt in, um, in that locker that we put the other food in or the other clothing in. Oh, dang it! I meant to, to read that. Trash can letter. I'm so I zoom pissed off. I'm so pissed off at you. You told me the forest talkers were legit and that we'd be doing good work out here. All I've seen is a ragtag bunch of dummies who are disorganized and have no plan. It's way too cold to be out here this time of year. In the wildlife, I mean, you didn't tell me there would be actual wolves out here. This is crazy. You can hear them outside at night howling. It's making me crazy. What are we doing out here? People said Great Bear was hit hard by the quakes, but man, I had no idea it was so stuck in the dark ages. You owe me big time for bringing up those supplies. And if the weather doesn't warm up soon, I'm out of here, and you will not be seeing me anytime soon. So, forest talkers oof, seem to be an emergency kit. That's probably what we're looking for. Oh, it's the uh, flare gun. And see, I'm just I'm gonna leave it. Got all the shells here too. And another corpse. Ooh, office key. We'll probably need that. Forest talker damn note. The damn forest talker note. Phil, Jackson seen some wolves around the area. And last week, Emily said she thought she saw a bear skulking around the camp. I'm not convinced it isn't those Briar House thugs trying to scare us off. But just in case, keep this flare gun handy. It's the closest thing we have to a firearm. Um, so yeah, the forest talkers seem to be environmental activists. Um, 
So they came up here. They came up here and um, tried to stop the dam from being used, I guess. Cloth. Yeah, we're actually... Yeah, we're gonna break this down. Six minutes. Yeah, break it down. Um, but, you know, it's rough up here. <laughs> Regardless of your, if you're trying to save the environment or destroy the environment, it's rough up here. So before I forget, I just want to put this shirt in here. Or... Maybe we should break this stuff down for cloth. How much cloth do I have? Five bandages, two cloth. Actually, I'm gonna break this hat down for cloth. Harvest. Ten minutes. Because it seems like whenever you get attacked, you usually get two or three things get torn up. So it's always good to have a few extra cloth on you. I could break those other stuff down into cloth, but they do take a while to break down. The bigger they are, the longer they take to break down. Can't go down, can't go out that way. Let's head upstairs. So what time of day is it? Middle of the day. Okay, is there? Let me, I'm just gonna see if we can go up to the third floor. No, it seems close. Okay. So the stuff's gotta be on this floor. Because we've been searching the area pretty thoroughly. Hmm, this looks like no, I guess it's just a computer. I was hoping it might be the computer parts we're looking for. Or the radio parts we're looking for. What have we here? Another hat. Should I break it down? Let's break it down. For cloth as well. So let's see what we got to eat. They always want to eat the bad stuff first. up pretty good and let's drink what we've got 54 yeah let's go ahead and drink this and then we'll yeah go ahead and drink some water oh no I thought okay we must be out of water I gotta remember to make more water thought we had plenty but I guess not Leave that, tin of coffee. Sure, let's take that. Let's make sure we could end up being useful. Thoroughly check all these places. Mm. 
Although I imagine there's probably a locked office where we'll have to use that key and it'll be in there. A book. How many books do we have? Six books. Okay. Because I found that books are the best fire starters. So I like to always make sure I got plenty of them. Crumpled note. The penmanship on this note suggests the author was in a hurry. I left it in the cave. Head back out from the dam, follow the river, look for a cave near a clearing with a hunter's blind. Okay. Follow the river, look for a cave near a clearing with a hunter's blind. Okay. Aha. It. Oh, okay, so it's marked on our map now. Excellent. So there's supply cash here. Just in case if we're ever in a bad way. We got it. We, it's good that we know that there. There are several supply caches hidden around Mystery Lake. Most are left by hunters or campers. Some are left by off grid preppers waiting for the government to fall or the end of the world or some such nonsense. Well, I'm glad they left it out there. Wonder if this is any good to eat. 21%. Yeah, we're gonna leave that. It's been there too long. Aid station. That sounds like what the trapper needs. Aha. Medical locker. Med station locker key. Okay, so we can't just right open like we have with other lockers like this one. Yeah, yeah. This stuff will come in handy. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. A lot of sports vests here. None of them are in very good condition. too because that's where we found that note that will lead us to the uh, supply cache Shelf. must be something we can use to fix the short wave huh this matches radio parts collection of miscellaneous electronic odds and ends torn out of old radios all right it. Okay. It doesn't seem like we can pick up those other things. Excellent. 76%. Yeah, we'll take that. Pry bar. 100%. Excellent. Of course, elevator is out of order. Should have the key for this, yes. So I imagine the key for the first aid kit, the first aid locker is going to be in here. Is it food or? Nice. Which seems weird that they would have the first aid locker locked and the key to the locker inside a locked office. Because if someone's really in need of a first aid kit, it's usually an emergency. You need to get to it right away. Hope nobody oh. needs this anymore. Worn light shell. A light outer layer meant to protect from wind and water has no real warmth value. Yeah, I think the parka we've got is better, so I'm gonna leave that. Okay. There's one of those singing fish. I'm sure it's one of the singing ones.
This will come in handy. We got tons of supplies to make fire if we really need it. But we're already good on that stuff, so. Um, we're gonna leave that. I think we've already actually got some tea. Okay, keep an eye out for possibly uh, aid station medical locker key. Take it. Elevator maintenance note. Carter Hydro Dam maintenance ticket. The elevator is acting up again. We've checked the mechanicals and they seem fine. Must be something glitchy in the el electrical system. Keep an eye on it. It's really the only way to the turbine room. If the elevator gets stuck, it'll be a long walk before you can get back to the control room. Uh, yeah, hope we can uh, find the combination of that locker. That'll come in handy. I think we've searched everything in here. Oh, not this yet. Mm, nothing. All right. So workbench. Um, since we did pick up that new pry bar drop the other one. All right, unlock. Carter Hydro Medical Supplies. Industrial strength antibiotics and very strong painkillers. Dangerous. You can get hooked on this stuff. Let's hope we don't need it. Yeah. We think it's just like straight up morphine. Nose. Okay. So I notice our um, our sleep, hunger, and thirst are dropping very quickly. I think that's because we're carrying too much stuff. And like I said, there's some stuff I want to drop anyways. So but let's let's do that. we're carrying any clothing we're not wearing. Okay, yeah, all this stuff we're gonna hold on to because we can use it. Hold on to all that stuff. Pry bars last a really long time. Okay, so we'll drop that, and we'll drop that. Well, the tools are what's very heavy. But I, I want to get these back to, uh... To Jeremiah's place. Because we could even just, like, leave them there. And then just use his workbench and just put them right back when we're done. Just carrying a lot of stuff, but there's really none of it I want to get rid of. So again, this the hunting rifle is so heavy, but it's so useful. Hope we uh, get a new knife soon. Yeah. I don't know. We'll just 
just, uh, I don't know, drink some of this stuff to lower our weight a bit. And we are a bit thirsty and hungry. Go ahead and drink one more. I think I clicked on the wrong one, but that's okay. Alright, that puts us right back up. Okay. It's getting late. But. I want to head back. I'd better check in on that old trapper. Although the weather is not good. Okay, I got a plan. There was the other trailer over here that we were gonna check on our way out. So let's check on it. Okay, no bear. Bear is gone. And hopefully there's some beds in here too. We can sleep in here for just hopefully like an hour or two maybe and hopefully the storm will pass by then oh there's a bedroll what's old bedroll no we can't pick it up we can just break it down i think i can use this heavy duty hand coverings that extend part way up the arm leather outers and wool liners warm and tough okay, that seems pretty good Very heavy though. They are very heavy. Let's see how they are. I mean, wow. They're warmer, more waterproof. I mean they're better in every way, except for they're they're heavier. And they're even a lot. They've got very low durability. Unfortunately, there is not a bed in here, but we can just go into the other trailer and sleep if the weather hasn't cleared by the time we leave. What have we here? Can't imagine that's going to be good, so we're just going to leave that. And we're going to leave that. Okay. Well, there's not much in here. It still sounds like it's the weather's really bad out there. Yeah. Okay. So let's head over here. Just sleep for a little while. Because we are a little low on tiredness, too. We'll just sleep for an hour. weather sounds much better now. At least it's not as windy. Okay. Yes, the weather is much better. It is late in the day, though. Okay, so here's my thinking. Do we want to go down here and risk 
kind of going out of the way and losing the tracks. Although again, we have the we have this now, so it makes it much easier to get around. Or do we just play it safe and take the tracks? I mean, again, we're in we're in really good condition right now. We really don't need any more supplies, and we're already overburdened. I think that's a wolf out there. Although we could avoid that wolf. Considering killing the wolf for its meat. Are those, is that another wolf back there? Are there two wolves? Okay, I'm starting to think the other way is actually the safe way. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, he's coming for us. He's coming for us. I think I'm just going to go around. Is he still following us? He is definitely still following us. Okay. Oh, if we really need some meat, there's some elk over there. They've got a ton of meat on them. Maybe just a deer. What is that? That doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. Was that a dead person? I think it is. The wolf's still coming after us. Looks like uh, one of the convicts that escaped from the uh, from the bus. So I wonder if we can get the wolf interested in the deer. If he'd leave us alone. Hey buddy. Oh, I think the wolf left. Yeah, I think the wolf yeah, the wolf's going after the deer. actually did that. But that's that's pretty interesting. Okay. So again, do we want to head back? Okay. Yeah, I think we're fine. Let's just head back to the tracks. So that is a very interesting thing. It's a good thing to know. I had no idea that the wolves would attack the deer and leave you alone. So if we ever need to, uh, if we ever need to do that again, that's good to know. All right. So now that we see the uh, electrical wiring there, the poles, the power lines there, we know getting close to the to the train tracks. I was just thinking about if you look at McKinsey's hands, it's interesting that there's that you can't see the gloves there, you know. I like the little model that you can see the clothes changing in the menu. But it's just interesting that. Oh, that's a wolf. Let's give it a wide berth. I don't want to kill the wolves if I don't have to. Hey buddy. Do not attack me. I have no interest in fighting you. But I will kill you if I have to. I have a gun. 
Even though I'm not, I'm not afraid to use it. I don't want to use it. The snow is very pretty. That's the, uh, it's a real bad thing. A real shame about snow. It's so pretty. But, like, especially when it, you know, when it first falls and there's no tracks or anything in it. It's so pretty. But, but it's just... That's about where the, um... The good qualities end. It's, it's no fun to shovel. It's no fun to drive in. It's incredibly cold. But hey, at least it's pretty. Okay, this wolf is not... Not backing off. Getting very tired out here. So I don't know too much about like wolves in real life, but like I wonder if this is what they would really do. Like if they're out, if you're out in the wild, like you know, out in the middle of snowy Canada, like will the wolves? If they're hungry, just continue to follow you until they get desperate enough, you know, either desperate enough to attack or you get too tired to keep moving. I feel like they're they're that kind of like relentless relentless hunter that they would just continue to follow you until they capture their prey. So I feel like we're about halfway back. Okay, we got enough stamina to run again. So let's do that. And I don't know why my voice is so crackly today. I just I think it's the dry weather. But it like, you know, just like that keeps cracking and breaking. Okay, I think the wolf has stopped following us. Ooh. That's because I think there's another wolf. I wonder if they have like territories. Because don't wolves normally hunt in packs? But they're all just a bunch of lone wolves in this game, which is good. Trying to take on multiple wolves would be incredibly rough. Okay. Run just a little bit to make sure we're out of the wolf's area. And check the map. Okay, good. We are headed straight for um Jeremiah's hut. I'm just gonna drink. Get a drink of water real quick. <sighs> I just chug some water real quick. Hopefully that'll help keeping my voice. My voice from cracking. Hopefully this will be better. Okay, and we got enough stamina to run again. We are getting very tired. But it'd be great if we could make it back to Jeremiah's. And it's getting dark. Yeah. Officially nighttime. So hopefully we can make it back to Jeremiah's before we collapse, which I think will be fine. We're getting we're getting pretty close. It's pretty much just on the other side of this hill. I just don't like going straight up the 
you know, to the top of the hills. If I can kind of, you know, sneak between the low point of two hills, that's much better. There's not really a very low point here, but this is definitely lower here than over there. So normally I kind of like to talk about what I've been up to in the past past week and just kind of, you know, thoughts and musings, but honestly, I haven't been doing much this week. I've just, um, well, I've been working a lot. Um, just because, you know, I got bills. <laughs> so I've been working a lot. That's really about it. As exciting as my week's been. Playing a lot of video games on my off time, you know. I, um, actually just tonight, just right before I started recording this, I got the uh, Platinum Trophy for Metal Gear Solid 5. So that was pretty, pretty exciting. I think that's, that's my, my proudest Platinum Trophy I've gotten so far. That's, this, it's definitely the one I worked the hardest for. I, um, I've got a couple others, but, like, one of them was, like, Lego Lord of the Rings, and it was super easy to get, and one that honestly kind of surprised me was the God of War one was super easy to get. Um, like, you basically just, once you do everything in the game, like, that's it. You got it. I mean, with, you know, there's a few side quests and stuff, but once you get all the collectibles and everything, it's that's it. You got it. <clears throat> like, I almost wish it would have been, you know, once you do everything on, like, the hardest mode. Or, you know, you at least do New Game Plus or something. Like, I just kind of wished it was harder to get the Platinum Trophy in it. But I also read an article recently about a guy who, like, that's basically what he does, is he he just collects PlayStation trophies. And it was, it was the guy who's who's got the most trophies of anybody. And um, he... And but they were just kind of talking generally about how trophies work and and specifically Sony PlayStation games um, and some game companies. We're getting close. We're getting close. Um, some game companies make the platinum trophies easy to get for that reason because it be, just to make it more accessible and it kind of makes the game more accessible and. So I kind of wonder if that's why they did it. Alright. We're back, Jeremiah. We did it. Got your radio parts. Got your first aid kit. Hopefully all of it helps. Dog oh, shit. Oh, that's smart. What was that adrenaline? Did you give him a shot of adrenaline? You're pretty banged up. You're probably a bit delirious too. I just gave you a shot of some heavy antibiotics. Hmm. You might feel funny for a while, but it'll help. It means you're gonna need some time to recover. Time? We don't have time. We need to get a message out. It's important. Message? You mean to your friend? Asking for medical help? Never mind that. Help me up so I can look at the radio. Let's see if the parts you brought back are any good. Let's 
That's a military shortwave, isn't it? Maybe. I know a bit about radios. That's not like any surplus I've ever seen. Ah, damn it! Well, the parts look fine. So, whatever's wrong with the radio goes deeper than that. What could it be? Uh, something to do with the power. <laughs> Fuses. Transformers, maybe. We have bigger problems to deal with first. That bear's out there. Hunting us. He's a smart old bastard. He'll keep us from getting out. Getting supplies. Finding help. Eventually, he'll either get us. Or starve us out. I gotta lay down. Help me back to the bed. <laughs> the dam was pretty busted up, like you said. The place was cracked open by the quake years ago and never recovered. I was already half dead at the time. Meaning? The dam dates back to the 60s. Industrialists from the mainland wanted to use it to power a mining town he was planning to build. But the bottom fell out of the price of coal, and he had to abandon those plans. Some fool tried to get it running again in the 80s, but then the forest talkers got involved, and that was the end of it. Pretty sure the Quakes finished the job once and for all. So, who are the forest talkers? Eco-terrorists. Activists, some call them. Depends on who you talk to, I guess. Why are they out here? Well, they've been active for years. They come and go. Mostly here to throw a wrench in the works for a variety of resource projects, mining, forestry mainly. They want Great Bear to remain a pristine wilderness. <laughs> you don't sound like you agree. Oh, I have no love for industry. But this is the way of the world. You have something they want, they take it. Nothing much you can do to stop it. Well, judging by what I saw in the dam, I'd say the forest talkers are still active. Well. That's good news for you. Keep your eyes open for supply caches they might have left behind. Can you tell me anything about where we are? Well, this whole area takes its name from Mystery Lake nearby. It's kind of a wilderness preserve. Though you wouldn't know it from the logging trucks. Huh. Not much around there, apart from some lake cabins that'll be locked up for the season. You've already seen the dam. Railroad passes through the area. Trains come through once in a while. Fewer every year. Whole area is mostly dead, most of the year. You sound like you like it that way. <laughs> I sure do. So, no other people living out here? You gotta understand. The Collapse destroyed Great Bear. There's nothing here to stay for. You meet anyone out here? Chances are they're hiding from something. Or someone. And you? Why are you here? I have my reasons. What's this unfinished business between you and the Bear? Ah. Me and the old bear. Every time we meet, we make a little trade. And what do you trade? <laughs> Each other's blood, mostly. Sounds like a losing proposition. Oh, I'm sure it will be. For one of us. The main reason I'm out here is I'm looking for someone. 
<laughs> you won't find too many people out here. That's kind of the whole point. This is someone important to me. A woman. She may have passed through here a few days ago. She might have been injured. What makes you think she came through here? She passed through the tunnel leaving Milton, but then... I'm not sure. Well, the roads from Milton don't lead this way. Wherever she's headed, you'll have to cross the mountains to find her. Not an easy path, even for the most experienced outdoorsman. I'll do whatever it takes. Well, you won't get far with that bear on the prowl. What we need is to get my radio up and running, so we can find out what the hell is going on. Maybe someone out there has seen your friend. The woman I'm looking for. She might be on her way to a place called Perseverance Mills. You know it? Yeah. Shit nothing town, north part of the island. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, I know it. We were on our way there, my passenger and I, when we crashed. I need to find a way to get there, or contact her. See if she's all right. You sure she's alive? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, well, normally I'd make some calls on the old shortwave. Whole area's been damn quiet since those lights in the sky. Even the wildlife's acting strange. But I might have an idea. What do you mean, the wildlife's acting strange? You live out here long enough, you get a sense for the patterns in nature. Right now, the patterns are broken. Critters aren't behaving the way they should. It's like they're spooked or something. No, not spooked. They're changed somehow. Best way I can say it is, Things don't feel right. You said you had an idea. What do you have in mind? Well, it's a long shot. But I may know how we can find out about your friend. I'm listening. This shortwave. I use it to keep an ear open for what's going on. So how do we get the radio working? There's no reason I can see why it shouldn't be working. Well, what about more parts? Or another radio? We might find another radio. But I think I have a better idea. Problem is, it's no use with the old bear out there. Your path to a working radio, and our survival, is through that bear. We have to find a way to deal with him first. Okay, so we have to deal with the bear. But you're half dead, and rifle shots don't seem to do much. So... That's because the old bear is special. I've been hunting and trapping for years, and I've shot a lot of bears. But I've never encountered anything quite like him. A special bear like that needs special magic to bring him down. Uh, magic? Don't worry, I'm not delirious. I don't mean literal magic, but we need the old knowledge, the old ways. What do you have in mind? There's an old story, local legend maybe, about one of the original settlers of this place, Spence. The story goes something like this. Spence shows up and sets up his claim shanty with his young family in tow. For generations, the family had been traders in the Hudson's Bay Company. Old voyageur stock, they say. Hard people. Survivors. One day, a bear shows up and menaces the homestead. Spence takes a shot at the bear, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Bear wanders off, but Spence's wife 
She takes a turn, slips into fever. For days, delirious, she screams about the bear. Local doctor can't do a thing for her, neither can the priest. A week later, a hired hand goes missing. And they find him. Just a body. Ravaged. Spence fears for his wife and kids. He's convinced some evil bear spirit is trying to kill them. Revenge for some slight in the past, maybe. Something in the family history. Spence gets some men together for a hunting party. They go out into the muskeg and track something big for days. Eventually corner it. Ah, it's a big son of a bitch. Biggest bear they'd ever seen. Man killer. Story goes, they empty their rifles into the bear and it just walks away. Like it's made of stone. They call it the demon bear after that. Wife's dying now. Spence believes the bear's evil spirit is killing her, eating her soul. He can't get anyone to join him on another hunting party. They know rifles don't work. So he forges a spear, like a boar spear, but bigger. From some old Hudson's Bay trapper's wisdom, apparently. He goes out into the muskeg, disappears for days, and then one morning, the wife's fever breaks, but nothing from Spence. Some men go out looking for him, and they find him, half dead, blood all over him, body torn almost in two. The bears work. And the last thing he says is, Spear stole the bear's soul. My wife is now free. And then he's gone. So, did he kill the bear? Nobody knows. Never found a carcass. They buried Spence, took the spear back, and hung it over the mantelpiece in the Spence homestead. Never saw that bear, or any other, again. Years later, after the Spence family faded to obscurity, wealthy land baron bought the spear to hang in his hunting lodge. Just so he could tell that story, I imagine. So, do you believe it? The story of the demon bear and the spear stealing its soul? What? <laughs> no. Of course not. I, I might spend all my time alone in the wilderness, but I'm not crazy. But the old stories sometimes have truths hidden in them. Spence might have been superstitious, but he had the right idea. Ten inches of cold, hard steel might do what a bullet can't. I'm convinced. A spear's the way to kill that bear. And you need to get Spence's bear-killing spear if we're gonna survive the winter. The old hunting lodge is still there. A couple of days' journey south. Follow the tracks the other way, through the muskeg, and you'll find it. If the spear's there, get it. It might be our best hope. And the radio? You deal with the bear, and let me worry about the radio. <coughs> now, let me rest. Good luck out there. Watch out for our demon. Right. Holy smokes. So, like I said, I never finished episode two, but... That, that all that was new and that was awesome that was really cool so um, I guess next time I'll explain kind of how it was how my original playthrough was different my first playthrough and um, I don't know, there's some other things in there I want to talk about so but I'll get to all that next time so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time